please rise for a brief moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. Today is Friday, October 17, 2022. Any freshman or sophomore interested in attending a field trip to the Beaver County Career and Technology Center can sign up and pick up a, per a permission slip in the guidance office. The complete permission slip is due in the guidance office by Friday, November 11th, and absolutely no permission slips will be accepted after this date. The winter dance is on Friday, December 9th at the Feds. Please pick up permission forms at the table on the fourth floor hallway and turn in your signed forms by November 9th to Ms. Sudo's room. Prep for the musical audition is Wednesday, October 19th at 2.30 p.m. in the auditorium. Audition date, dates for the musical are Tuesday and Wednesday, October 25th and 26th after school in the auditorium at 2.30. Any senior inter interested in attending a field trip to the Bill to the build on careers in the construction industry at the Dave, David L. Lawrence Convention Center on November 4th can sign up and pick up a, a permission slip in the guidance office. Any high school student wanting to participate in trunk or treat, please see Mr. Tabe to sign up. Students, if you only require forms or any items from your career portfolio from last year, you will not be permitted to attend any field trips or dances. If you are unsure if you own anything, please check with your home teacher, main office, or guidance office. Any sophomore, junior, or senior interested in attending the field trip to CCBC's Aim for the Future Today on October 21st can sign up at, and pick up a permission slip in the guidance office. Any student driving to school, this is a reminder that you must have a new Brown High School parking pass. If you already have one, you can stop in the guidance office. If you're a Votech student that drives, you will need a New Brighton High School parking pass and a Votech driver form. Both are available in the guidance office. Jocelyn will be here Thursday, October 20th during homeroom to meet with seniors regarding caps and gowns. Jocelyn will be here Wednesday, October 24th during homeroom to meet with sophomores regarding classrooms. Jocelyn will be here Thursday, October 27th during all lunch periods to collect all classroom and cap and gown orders. This is, on this is the only in school order day. Check on money orders must be made to Jostens. Orders can be given to Ms. Gentile in advance. Attention freshmen and sophomores. Your career portfolio requires you to have a college visit. You can sign up or meet with representatives from the list of schools below in the counseling department that was sent to you via email. And now, on to the weather. Today is cloudy with a 20% chance of precipitation with a high of 51 and a low of 33. Now, back to the news. Happy birthday to Julia Doucette, Sadie Walton, and Landon Zucci. Today's lunch is going to be cheesy breadsticks, macaroni and cheese, turkey salad, ham and cheese sandwich, or cheese pizza. The menu is subject to change. Have a great day, New Brighton. Today, you will learn how to keep your friends, classmates, and family safe from hurting themselves or someone else. The Safe to Say program has three important steps. Step one, look for warning signs and threats. Step two, when you observe a warning sign or a threat, act immediately and take it seriously. In step three, say something to a trusted adult, call 911, or use the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. Using these three steps, you will make a real difference in keeping your school safe and getting help for people who need it. The good news is that people often show warning signs before they hurt themselves or others. What is a warning sign? Warning signs are thoughts, feelings, actions, and behaviors that show you that a friend or classmate may intend to hurt themselves or others. It is important that you don't dismiss warning signs as someone just joking around, being dramatic, or seeking attention. 
Here are some examples of warning signs. Excessive irritability, lack of patience, quick to anger, withdrawal from friends, including on social media, thoughts of harming themselves or others. Statements or behaviors that intimidate or mock others based on real or perceived differences. Examples include differences based on race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, disability, or physical appearance. You also need to look out for threats. So what is a threat? A threat is when a person communicates that they intend to harm themselves or someone else. They might say it, write it, or post it. Here are some examples of statements that would be considered threats. Someone should blow this place up, or life isn't worth living. Or statements like, I am going to take her and her friends out. You'd, better, you'd be better off without me. They will regret they ever met me. Where are warning signs and threats found? On social media, online, social media, text, and through the phone. Now that you know step one, how to recognize warning signs and threats, let's learn about step two. Act immediately and take it seriously. It's important to act immediately and take it seriously when you see a warning sign or threat because all too often no one acts at all. I thought someone else would tell someone. I thought they would feel better tomorrow. They are too young to hurt themselves or others. I would say something if it was a big enough deal. If he was going to do something, why would he announce it publicly? The most important thing is that if you see warning signs and threats, you act immediately and take it seriously. It's up to you to be an upstander, not a bystander for your friends and classmates. Another reason that prevents students from acting immediately is that they fear they may be labeled a traitor or a snitch. They also may be afraid of being alienated, getting physically hurt, or getting into trouble. There's a huge difference between saying something and telling on someone or snitching. When you snitch, you're looking for a reason to get someone in trouble, either to create problems for them or to get something for yourself. When you say something, you're trying to get someone help for their own safety. After we see warning signs or threats, act immediately and take it seriously. The final step is to say something to a trusted adult, call 911, or use the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. When you see warning signs, it's important to say something to a trusted adult. A trusted adult is someone who will listen to you and someone you can always rely on. Trusted adults have the experience and knowledge to get help. Here are several examples of trusted adults. Your trusted adults can be a lot of different people. They could be your school teacher, your school administrator, your counselor, or your coach. They could also be someone outside of school, your parent or guardian, a friend's parent, family member, or a religious leader. And it's important to know who your trusted adults are right now. This way, if you do see warning signs, you will know immediately who to go to. Also, remember that in a case of a life-threatening situation, always call 911 immediately and then say something to a trusted adult. Talking to adults or 911 about a warning sign or threat that you are seeing can sometimes feel difficult or awkward. But here is what you can do to prepare for this conversation. Gather any texts, photos, videos, or other communications that you have available to show your trusted adult or share with 911. If the conversation was spoken, then write down what you heard when you meet with a trusted adult. 
After you gather any evidence you may have, there are three important parts to having a conversation. First, you must be direct. You can start your conversation with a sentence like, I must talk to you about my friend Jane, or I need to report an emergency about my friend Joe. Second, you want to explain the warning signs you are seeing with a sentence like, they have threatened to hurt another student. Finally, you want to clarify what you want to see happen as a next step with a sentence like, I need your help now to get my friend help immediately. And if you have it, bring the individual's full name, address, and any social media information. To summarize, step one, be direct. Step two, explain. Step three, clarify your next steps. You just learned how to say something to a trusted adult or call 911. But what if a trusted adult is unavailable or you are not comfortable calling 911? Use the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. You might be wondering, does that mean I have to give my personal information to a stranger? No, the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system is completely anonymous. So you don't have to give any information about yourself that you don't want to. The Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system works by simply submitting your concern or issue using the app, telephone hotline, or website 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are trained crisis counselors ready to receive and act on anything you submit to them. To use the app, download it to your phone or mobile device. Search for Safe to Say Something Anonymous Reporting System in either Google Play or the App Store. Next time you have your phone, remember to download the app. If you want to submit a tip on the website rather than through the app, first go to safetosayPA.org. Once there, select the Submit a Tip icon and then complete the form. If you'd prefer to submit a tip over the phone, call 1-844-SAF-2-SAY or 1-844-723-2729. You will speak with a crisis counselor who will ask you a series of questions. Before this call is over, the crisis counselor will provide you with a tip number and password. This information will allow you to log in online and provide new or additional information you may have about your tip. After you've logged in online, it also allows you to exchange private messages to share any additional anonymous information. It's as easy as that. Thanks to your anonymous tip, the crisis counselor will work with the appropriate people in your school or community to act on your tip and intervene as needed. Today, you learned the three steps to the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. Step one, look for warning signs and threats. Step two, act immediately and take these warning signs seriously. Step three, say something to a trusted adult, call 911, or use the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. By bringing the three steps of Safe to Say Something into our day-to-day -day lives, we as students We'll be able to reduce violence and threats in our schools and make our schools and communities a better place to be. We have the power to make a difference in the world around us just by saying something. So why should you say something? You are the eyes and ears of your school. Why should you say something? You see and hear things others don't. Why should you say something? You can reduce violence, suicide, and threats. If you say something, you can save a life of a friend or classmate. Thank you for taking the time to learn about Safe to Say Something. Being a student means you are uniquely positioned to influence and support the community around you. Stand up for your school, your peers, and your friends, and say something. Thank you.